This is Fat Man DD1, the one you love, Fat Man DD1 Entertainment. There will be something popping up there. All right. So let me get into this and be very Pacific with everything I'm trying to say. Now, not Pacific Rim. I'm trying to say Pacifically Marvel. <laughs> and today, well, last night, I know everybody saw it last night. Don't spoil nothing. I won't have any spoilers, just pictures. <laughs> but today, I want to get everybody into this. Now, today, Marvel has just, well, is showing Thor The Dark World. Now, Thor The Dark World is intense, is extreme, it's strong. And for some reason, I think Marvel is repeating something they don't want to. Your posters. Look at this poster for a second right here. Look at it. Really, really look at it. Now, you're going to see Iron Man and Thor. Guess what they both have at their sides? Yes. Now look at the backgrounds. All right, right. And then look at the backgrounds. Now notice that each time you see the background, each time you see the characters, the movies are getting darker. Iron Man three. A lot of fans didn't like Iron Man three. They didn't like it. They didn't accept it. It was dark. It was strong. It was gritty. It wasn't. It was Iron Man, but to an extreme of how real Iron Man could really get. Thor: The Dark World experiments that same type. Of darkness, deepness, and realism. Now, it's hard to make a comic book become real to making it so fictional to realism. You know, people kind of get at, you know, poke at it, stroke at it, and be like, what, what the fuck is this? They get mad at that thought. But let me tell you right now if you don't know the Thor comics or the Thor, or like inside Thor, the nine realms of Asgard and so on, you're going to have a hard time following the movie, I heard. But if you know the information, click right here. Marvel, click right here. This will tell you everything you need to know about Thor. If you're a true comic fan, all right, leave me a diss down below. I don't care. But right now, Marvel's getting dark and gritty with Thor itself. Now, I love the way they show Jane Foster, Lady Sif. I want to see more of the Warriors 3 I love that the fact that Tom Hiddleston is milking everything they have on this character. He's milking it because girls, women, people love him. He's like Justin Bieber, except he doesn't sing. He does dance, though. I know everybody's seen him dance. But Tom Hiddleston is, is milking everything out of this. He's bigger than Thor right now. A lot of people that went to see Thor 2, The Dark World... I think they went to see Tom Hiddleston, and I don't like that. As a fan of movies and comics and other stuff, I don't like when people just do it for one thing. Do it for everything. Do it for the storyline. Do it for the people that made it. Do it for the hard work of coming off the Avengers into making this. Basically, I hate when people just see something just for one person and leave, and then there's a waste of your ticket, your money, your time. Watch it on DVD, or sorry, watch it on Netflix. Or watch everything else because Blockbuster is Blockbuster is dead, and so is DVD. So let me move from that rant and on to the real subject. Now we've seen it. Anthony Hawkins has returned as the All Father Odin or the All Father whatever. We see Chris Hensworth has returned as Thor. We see a lot of more characters than we haven't seen in the first Thor movie. They just vanished into Earth. It was good, and then it was bad at the same time. The, um, the first Thor movie had me waiting, anticipating waiting. It just had me thinking how good this movie was. I've seen it four times. Four times. I've seen Iron Man 2 seven times. Just just to notice little things in the movie that I haven't noticed before. Um, the movie itself was strong. was a little bit... Like deep and was really nice, you know. It just had to explore a character, a growing Odin, since he is a god. And uh, I said Odin, Thor, and all the Thorness that happens. But the love, the heartache, the pain, the struggling that he went through, and the fact that he is growing as a person made that movie good. Thor two, on the other hand, he's growing more, but he's also worried about Earth. He's also worried about what's next, what's coming. And I like the fact that the Dark Elves, that we see here Malekith, we see the pictures of Malekith and so on, that they got it, they got Malekith just right. Um, but, you know, they didn't get him to a T. 
but they got him to a C, not a T. That's, that's, that's basically enough for a character. That's basically enough for what you want to see Marvel do. They got everything, excuse me, they got everything to an, uh, a proper. And respecting the fact that they made these characters, the, respecting the fact that they took everything, made it more realistic as they could with a Marvel movie, they got darkness, they got grittiness, and they made Thor good, you know, we, the dark elves, oh my goodness, these dark elves are some scary ass shit, they're masks, you don't see no pupils, nothing, there. that's scary as fuck, and I respect that part, they got weapons, they got attacks, they got Thor fighting rock monsters, they basically are showing more of Asgard than Earth, you, get, you do see little clips here and there of Thor fighting in Earth, but I think more of the action is in Asgard. That that makes this movie iconic for what they're trying to stand for. Throw the Dark World. There's so much stuff out there that I wanted to get into and just dig into it. Um, I think tomorrow I'm going to go see the movie. And for my last, last video way back, I was supposed to talk about Thor. Uh, it was part two. I never talked about that. Thor, the first movie was Brothers at Ends. A father with a duty... A stubborn boy trying to become a man that isn't a man. And then at the end of it, you got brothers fighting over power, fighting over this, fighting over that. Loki's still alive. This movie is not just about Loki. It's about Thor and Loki. Part two, part two I mean. The first one was about Thor and struggling and Loki and issues and Odin and secrets. This second one is about darkness, people, lives at hand, and Odin... And Thor and everyone trying to show what they can, trying to show off a lot more. And in this one, we see we see Thor's mother get into a fight. That's actually some grittiness. Like she picks up the weapon. Like she's the warrior four. <laughs> Forget the warriors three. She's the warrior four. She's the fourth warrior. That's how she became the wife of Odin. Like showing grit. And I like that. Like Lady Sif needs to learn something from her <laughs> because that's where all the true everything comes from. Um. For some reason, I'm, I'm missing a character. Uh, there is no Enchantress. Enchantress, there is no um, there's no Executioner. There are a lot of characters I want to see still. I think that will show up in Thor 3 if they ever come to make it. So after this, Chris Hensworth said his contract, I think, expires to the second Avengers movie, then Thor 3, and then that's it. But we all know, we'll probably still see Chris Hensworth around. We don't know. Chris Hensworth and Tom Hiddleston, we don't know if we're going to see them. But these characters, this movie is awesome. And I'm Fat Man DD1 saying, go see Thor The Dark World, watch my video, share with your friends. You know, this is Fat Man DD1 saying, I'm Fat Man, you not, but, you know, have a good one, and I'm out.